Dr. Holdison, will you tell us if the piano is too loud in sure. yeah. proximity to you there? What are you seeing again? Is this one you're doing? Ben DeMere's screen, yeah. yep. Just wanted to make sure that it was supposed to be the first one and not. Try it as you go down on those notes, saying, and the night, and the nightingale sings. It's like, and the nightingale sings. Trying to push down on those. Um, uh, you did uh, such a good job when you forgot the words, you kept going, and you kept making music. That's good. Because some people, that would totally throw them, and they'd be, they'd be done. Um, but you kept going. Awesome. Um, the other thing that I'd like to see you do is work on connecting the line all the way through. In, excuse me. Excuse me. Instead of just singing note, 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 think no, 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 and really connect it. Will you just sing for me? Where's, what's your favorite part of this piece? Do you have a favorite part? No? Um, let's do, let's do just the beginning of the second verse, so the top of page five. And start, no, the rose is so soon. Instead of, no, the rose is so soon. Do you know what I mean? Can you start right on that? There's your pitch. One, ready, sing. Do that same thing and 
and open up your mouth a little bit more um, and let the sound out. Know the roses instead of know the roses. So don't, don't sing in this much lip. Sing in this much lip. Okay? okay. Go. Same thing. Connection and space. <laughs> Sound, but also have the connection. I can try. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. I think that that's the, the biggest thing that I'm hearing from you is you just need a little more connection and a little more uh, a little more smooth feeling and sing the song, not the notes. That's really well done, though, sir. Excellent job. Thank you. You're really very welcome. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. I'm not going with the guitars for your duet, right? <laughs> Uh, the last thing I judged, you just did comments. Oh, sure. So I write all my comments in the back. I always forget about circling the things.
missing for me, again, the part that says uh, he was happy as can be, measure 39 and 40. And I want you to think about how you create that sound on the word be. And, and really think about it. We just sing those two measures, 39 and 40. You know where I am? Yeah. Yep, right there. Sing it. First time you did it, you had this really nice resonant pingy sound. Um, will you sing the word B and smile a little when you sing it? B. Yeah. Now take that and go back to. Uh, I don't know where's a good place. Let's go all the way back to 28. The traveler replied, "Well, that's not quite true." When you sing that, will you sing with that smile? Try that right there, the traveler. The traveler replied, that's all. That's okay. I'm not worried about the words. You mess up the words, that's fine. That's the sound I want. Do that again. The traveler replied, that's all quite true. But this, I Keep think, the is the thing for you to do. If it's a young day that is fair and bright, then patch the old roof that's gone and Good. Right. Let's do that one right there. Then patch the old roof. Can you throw patch out a little bit more? So instead of going, so throw and reaching and trying to set yourself on top of it, I want you to just knock it down. Right on, then patch. Then patch the old roof that's gone yeah. and tight. Did you feel a difference with that? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you've got great tone. You've got, but sometimes it gets a little swallowed, a little dark, like you're trying to create your sound instead of just singing the music. And then sometimes when you go to the upper part, you lose the connection to your breath, and you just kind of reach and grab instead of just sing through. Other than that, there's a lot of really good singing on here. I would love to see you be more playful with it, though. This is a fun song. This is not a serious song at all. So if you're going to sing it like a serious song, then you're, you're missing the excitement of it. Um, just have more fun while you sing. Don't, don't worry so much about uh, what your notes are like or any of that. Just sing and have fun, because everything is there for you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good work. Excellent work. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to hear you. Mm -hmm. Who's next on the schedule? Kathy. Or after. After Kathy? No, Kathy's next for herself. Yes. Catherine, sorry, I had it wrong. There's so it's blue. Gotta be sisters. They're twins. twins. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say twins, but I didn't want to quite go that far. Right. That's right, but man, it's obvious. <laughs> yeah, it is. We're not even identical. You're not identical. We're not identical. Okay. Close enough. Very much and close enough. In my opinion, you looked more different. <laughs> you, you still look more different? In my opinion, at least. But now you look more and more. That was the way it was with my, I have a, a younger brother, he's like three years younger than me. And I remember when we got uh, his senior pictures back, when he was a senior in high school, and we set them next to my senior pictures, and everybody always told us we looked like, but we could never see it, and then we set those two pictures next to each other, and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was right, exactly. Everyone was right, you were wrong. Yeah, exactly. Give me one second here. Tommy Lad? Mm -hmm. Okay, go to it.
Uh, it's like blast out like bam. I guess I don't know. Do you change anything about how you produce it when you because you feel like you're 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 trying to get that bam feeling? Probably. Yeah. Okay. I think you do too, and I like it. Um, will you just sing that last Tommy Lad for me, just like you just did? And I want you to really feel how you produce the sound on the word lad. Wait, do I start with Tommy Lad? Tommy Lad! Good. Will you say Tommy Lad, ad, instead of la, ah? Hear the difference? Ad. Yeah, just do, try that one time. Tommy Lad! No, that didn't work. Forget I said that one. I love what you do up there, but there's a there that at times you you cover the sound a little bit. I'm gonna way over exaggerate this, so don't think this is what you sound like. But it sounds like this. Tommy la, oh, oh. Okay, like it's pulled back. Can you sing Tommy Lad and instead of and when you sing the word lad, like you're gonna take a bite out of an apple. Feel like what your what your face is gonna feel like when you take a bite out of an apple. Right on Tommy Lad again. Tommy Lad! Yeah, put your hand here and, and, and like it, take that bite and say, Lad! Lad! There you go. Now, can you keep that placement? Go back to, but I wish you luck and I wish you joy. And feel that. But I, but I, but I, what is it? But I wish you luck. Instead of, but I wish you, but I wish you luck. Just a little more forward. But I wish you luck, I wish you joy, I wish you many a crown. Yes. Oh, you lost it there. Crown was great. Crown was wonderful. And then you lost it just a little bit on land. So I think that's one of the things you can work on is just trying to get a little bit more forward placement. Don't let it fall back quite so much. Now, that'll be completely different when you're singing in choir. Because in choir, or in a group setting, you're trying to go for more warmth in your sound. So maybe then, then that, that darker sound would be okay. But when you're doing a solo, go ahead and, and be a little brighter with it. Second thing that I really like to see you do is be more expressive with your music. I feel like you're singing, you're doing all the notes perfectly, all the rhythms are perfect, all of the um, uh, you know placements, intonation is all great. But I feel like you're thinking really hard about it and you're not allowing the music to sing. Um, what's your favorite? Do you have a favorite verse of the three? Um, probably second one. Probably the second one. Okay, then let's do the second verse. Uh, where does that start? Where does it like because I'm not allowed to bounce. Usually, I bounce when I sing. But well, let's see a little bit about. Yeah, no, and that's she's telling me the right stuff. But yeah, let's I just see, see how it changes if you bounce. Um, so, uh, let's do. Is that top of page three? Tell me, lad. Tell me, lad. You're a funny little chap. Okay, right there. Tommy Lad, Tommy Lad, you're a funny little chap. Good, let's do that again. Now, I think the bounce accentuates the feeling of the note. This time I want you to take your hands like you're holding on to something really stretchy, like a rubber band or, or some, some caramel or something like that, and I want you to pull. Tommy Lad, Tommy Lad, you're a funny little chap. So that you're not feeling every note, but instead you're feeling pull all the way. Try that, right on it again. Tommy Lad, Tommy Lad. Yeah, good. Did you feel what you did? Yeah. You did great. You went Tommy Lad, and then you pulled really hard on Lad. Yeah. Don't keep okay. it consistent. Keep it consistent. Don't pull. That's what I'm trying to get you to avoid. Tommy Lad, Tommy Lad, you're a funny little chap. That was better. That was better. It's that the leap is a little bit off uh, as far as the punching, but after you get through the leap, then everything is good. Um, and then uh, when you did funny little chap, that was excellent. Now take, put your hands down and do the same thing, and, and take the whole line to the word funny. Tommy lad, Tommy lad, you're a funny little chap. And then come back from the top of that, so that it, it has arch to it. Tommy Lad, Tommy Lad, you're a funny little chap. Yeah, now can you, last thing, um, you're doing great by the way, thank you for doing that. Do that again and start it softer, get to the dynamic that you got to on the word funny, and then come back to where you started on Tommy. Okay? Tommy Lad, Tommy Lad, you're a funny little chap. That's it, that's absolutely it. That's
that's the next step for you. Put the music in it. Don't worry so much about no, 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 no. Let it. Let the music speak. I loved that phrase. That was excellent. Good job. Thank you for singing me today. You're being judged as soon as you hit the door, ladies. Smile.
Lennon across the group. I'm, I'm very excited to hear that. Uh, notes and rhythms and everything get on. Lots of, of, of wonderful things happening there. Um, you also are doing a really good job of uh, making, making the, the sound one sound instead of, you know, what are there, 16 of you? Uh, or three different parts having three different sounds almost all the time. One spot that I would really like to hear that blend improve on is when the sopranos go into the higher register. Um, let's see, we're gonna we can do that. Let's do um, page four, measure 16. This is, I can be a street light. Sopranos, uh, I'm looking over here. Are you over here? I assume that you're all over here. All the way up to Catherine. Perfect. And Mary and Ryan the next year singing second when it splits. Okay. So far the second. You guys are doing a great job. Rock stars. Yep, seconds when that split happens. I can hear it every time, so good for you. Um, so, Sopranos, when you go up to the word light, when you go up that note, can you move more breath as you go up? What I hear is, and I'm way exaggerating, so don't think that this is how you sound, but what I hear is, I can be a street light. <laughs> and it gets like you're afraid to sing the high note. I want you to be proud of the high note and sing through it. I can be a street light. And use the crescendo, because there's a crescendo written there. Use that to, to take it through there. Can we start right there? Um, just the soprano. So that's including the soprano twos that are singing. So do alto. Yeah. Yeah. One, two. Better. Better. Did it feel any different to you? Or did it feel exactly the same? It just felt more complete to me. Now, add the altos into that and go on. But... What I want you to do is, after you hit that light, then I want you to bring the dynamic back as you come to the bottom of that. I want it to look more like this. Right now it looks like this, and that's it. Let it look like this, okay? Let's do it. Uh, everybody at 16. One, two. I can be a Start that song. I can be, I can be a street light. I have to say all the wrong words. No, it's but start soft, grow enormously like you did, and then come back to that because that was so exciting. Do that again. One, two. I can be now go. a street just showed me how brilliantly you can sing softly, and everything right now kind of sits in a mezzo piano to mezzo forte range. I want to see piano, and I want to see forte, and maybe even pianissimo and fortissimo, um, because you've got a ton of great things going on. The next step to make this just spectacular is to be more expressive and more musical with it. Um, you could do exactly what you just did and be happy with it, but I think that you could be blown away by what you can accomplish if you just do those nuance things. A little softer, soft, grow into a bigger bay, coming back down, and doing that in every phrase, not just what's written on the page. Other than that, they're really impressively sung. It's great to hear you guys. Thank you so much. Bravo. You guys were quite loud today. That's impressive. Alright. If you're staying for a mix, just breeze. They're next. And those of you who are done who may eat,
these thoughts you felt were great. That wasn't very convincing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's good. That's good. We are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can understand that. <laughs> so, everything that I said to the treble group that went before, this group took that next to that next level. You did have a, a big forte. You did have some more shapes and things, which I really appreciated. Uh, so, so bravo to you on that. What I did not care for as much with this group is that the tone lacked. Um, unity across all parts. Like the opening, great unity amongst the, the treble parts. Then when we went, when we got in and it, it, it started to split into parts, we kind of started to fight each other a little bit. Gentlemen, sometimes you're drifting from your notes to the notes that you want to sing, uh, which is sometimes the alto and sometimes the soprano. It wasn't even consistent. So, um, so that Johnson. is it. What? The very talented. Same yeah, they can sing both parts. That's great. <laughs> Not always accurate, but at least you recognize their notes, right? Um, but uh, so, so you've got to be more solid on that. Um, and then as you get into those louder sections, make sure that you're not pressing for volume. Um, make sure you're not, you're not really trying to, to, to over sing in order to create the volume. Instead, let everything grow to a point where you are like at the level that you are just about there. I, I tell my choir, don't sing louder than beautiful. Um, you may have heard that too. But if you get to that point where you're pressing, then the beauty goes away. Uh, and that really happens mostly because of where your vowel placement is. If your mouth collapses down, your vowel will be flat sounding, not necessarily flat in pitch, but flat sounding, and then the pitch doesn't, or the, the music is not as beautiful and becomes more forced. For example, at the end, when you say a wish for peace on earth, you had open vowel. Sounded really quite good. When you sang song they sing at the top of page 12, not so much open vowel, not as good. Can you just sing for me a wish for peace on earth? One thing about the word earth, take the R and throw it in the trash can. Um, a wish for peace on uh, uh. But sing with the same vowel. Sing that and think about how your mouth is shaped, how, your, uh, how, your, how much open your, your lips are apart, and where the sound is resonating, where it's buzzing and feeling inside the mouth. Try that, a wish on, for peace on earth. And on four. One, two, three. in that same place, exactly the same place. Whatever you did that time with your mouth, do it at the top of page 12. Song may sing. what you need to be. Don't sing louder than beautiful. Make sure you're singing the right notes and give constant attention to your vowel placement so that you can really create a unity of sound that is consistent across all of your voices. Good. Thank you. I look forward to working with you guys as a full choir later. Thanks everyone. Um, lunch for everybody with Mary and Catherine and David and Wayne. And Emily. Emily, no lunch for you yet.
stars fall from the sky? Mm -hmm. All right.
Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean for you to stop. That's okay. That's it. That's that's it. Be more expressive. Let it let it really have some of that energy to it. And then just some things that I said to you both in your solos. So, uh, so you sang the soprano part, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when you do the soprano, um, make sure that you you really keep that brightness to it, uh, especially as you get high. Both of you have a tendency to kind of pull back your tone into your um, so it's a vocal tone. Don't always feel like you have to do that. Um, when you pull back your sound, sometimes it manipulates the vowel so that the, the, it doesn't have the ring and the beauty. The, and then the other thing is, I really want to hear as much as you can more legato. Connect note to note instead of singing each note individually. But really, very fine performance. I'm very happy to hear you. Thank you so much. Thanks for all your performing today. You guys have been busy. Yeah. You guys have each had a solo, you have a duet, you have both of the ensemble groups, right? Solo, you still have a clarinet solo, awesome. Good for you guys. Thank you so much. Emily's brave enough to have fans. <laughs>
Okay, so here's what I'm going to tell you. Your first note scared me. Were you scared when you sang it? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it sounds it's like. It's always bad. So it is not. Yes, it is. <laughs> Negative self-talk. That's why it sounds bad. Because once you got to the word you, your tone changed. Can you just start it again? Play, uh, like, just measures five and six um, for the intro. And then I want you to breathe and just release your air. You have a tendency throughout to kind of clench your air and hold it instead of using it. Even if you do this, you, I'll be okay with that. I want you to just release the air. Here we go, just those two measures before. Almost, almost. Let's take the dynamic level up one marking. So it's marked at piano, let's make it mezzo piano. Release the E. Same thing. It's just that it's just a mental block? Yeah. Okay. I think that you need to get rid of that mental block. I'm going to tell you this. Measure 73 is fantastic. That's the better self, my love, especially the highest note that you sang. And here's what I think happened. I think you released the air and you let the air do all the work. At the ends of your phrases, I'm hearing you release right at the end. It's like you, you are, it's like you, it's like you have this air bank, and you're, you, you have all this air that you know you have to use for the phrase. And in the first eight, 12 beats, whatever it is, you use this much of the air. And then you're like, oh, I got tons of air. And so you release everything. Your vibrato kicks in. There's, there's a little bit more spin, a little bit more energy to the end of it. That's what happens in the high part. You're like, OK, I got to sing these notes. I got to use all my air. If you can learn to consistently use your air and let it flow with freedom so that there's never any feeling of clench or holding. So one thing that can happen is you can, people will take a breath and they'll go, and then they'll bear down on it, and they're absolutely engaged, and it'll come all the way around their back. Do you feel like that's what you do? So what you want to do is make yourself fat. You want to take that breath and then just let everything be loose. And I think if you can do that, it will, it will let the air come out more like this, instead of like this, and then at the end. Can we just do um, measure 65? That's my heaven, my heaven, my falling tears. And I want you, the whole time, I want you to just feel fat and flat. Okay? And then I'll let you go. Is that your pitch? Okay, ready? That's okay. That's okay. I'm not even worried about this part. I just okay. give me a place to start, because I love the crescendo.
Instead of a big open space uh, to get that to get that mount out, um, and then keep that vowel consistency placement throughout the whole thing. Don't let it vary. Like at the beginning, uh, the second entrance, um, when you came in, sir, you had a beautiful tone. It was open and warm and confident. And then when you guys got to give me again, um, then you closed back down again. Work for that vowel placement all the way through, and let that be uh, a beautiful sound from beginning to end, regardless of whether you're singing by yourself or you're singing melody. Uh, because when actually when you sing harmony, it's harder to tune and blend and become one if you're both going over your mouth. Because then you can't really hear each other as well. But a very fine performer. Thank you so much, guys. Good work. What is Emily's brother? It's who's? Emily's brother? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's a senior, I'm just a freshman. <clears throat> one more, Dave. This is my clarinet one, huh? Yes. All right, my clarinet judging debut. Yeah. You're earning your keep. You did you sing my part once. You did you sing my notes, but. Whenever you get your own.
Sometimes you, your, your, your mind and your eyes got ahead of your fingers. Um, but then when you got to the B section, which was uh, like, I don't know if you're looking at the same sheet, but measure 45, top of page 9, um, things got more consistent tempo-wise then. And then you went back to the beginning on the repeat, and it got very, very um, hairy again. And then you went to the coda, and I felt like the coda, you weren't, you didn't know quite as well, maybe, as you did at the beginning, and so the tempo slowed down again. Here's the key for you on, on tempo is, is you've got to get that metronome out, and you've got to feel it. And then set a tempo that can be comfortable um, so that when you get into a situation like this where you're playing in front of somebody and you get nervous, and you, we all get nervous and speed up. That, that's fairly typical. Then you can kind of 
kind of find that, that spot where you practice and pull it back to that, and then you'll, you'll be able to have the control. The other thing that I feel like you're doing a little bit is that you're overblowing into the instrument. Um, and that is, uh, is, is making it harder for the sounds to come out uh, with the warmth and the clarity that you want. Um, so I, again, I think if you can find a, a consistent tempo, the air then will become, you'll, it'll be easier for you to breathe and release the air as when you get going fast, sometimes the air gets, you get uh, tight with what you're, what you're trying to do and then you, you force the air instead of letting there be just a flow all the way through. Um, but there are lots of great moments in this and I think that, that you just keep chugging away. Um, but, but get that metronome, man. Get that, put your phone on, find a metronome on your phone, and just feel that tick, tick, dot, 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 keep those eight notes, because there are a lot of eight notes in this piece, and you just don't want them to go too fast. That's my biggest thing for you. Good. Thank you. Thank you.